It says in chapter 8, Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son had been restored to life, saying, Arise, and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. Now, how many know this woman was a notable woman? She was well-to-do. At this point, we don't know if her husband died because he's not mentioned at all, so we think maybe he passed away. So maybe it's, the, maybe it's her, and maybe it's her son. But notice what the man of God said, that we to leave. Now, she was a well-to-do woman. I'd be like, you know, I got stocked up. I mean, I understand it's going to get bad. We, we, we can handle this. It makes more sense to stay here. No, you need to get out of town. And so they leave and do what the man of God said, even though it doesn't make sense. And so the woman rose and notice this, did according to the saying of the man of God. But what that simply said is she did the word of God. She obeyed the word of God. And she went and, and with her household and to dwell in the land of the Philistines seven years. And she goes to an enemy land. It came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned to the land of the Philistines. And she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha has done. Now it happened. <laughs> this is so good. Now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead uh, to life, and that there was a woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king. Notice what happened. As he's there telling that, the woman shows up. And Gehazi says, My Lord, O king, this is the woman. This is the woman. And this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life over the king. Ask the woman. She told him. So in other words, are you, are you, are you yes, I am. And this, so the king, notice what happened. The king asked her, you know, what do you want? And so the king appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Wow. My good, yeah, come on. I mean, that, you know, he's got, stand on the word of God, even when it doesn't make sense. I mean, that's crazy. Years, seven years plus later, she comes back, and, and obviously her husband's not there, so she's got to make an appeal to the king. She's like, will you give me my land back, right? The king can do whatever he wants. So she makes this appeal, but the moment she walks in, it just so happens. Come on, come on. It just so happens. Gehazi is before the king, and the king says, tell me about that, Elisha. Tell me something. I love hearing the stories of those miracles. Tell me. And so he's telling a story about how he raised the dead, and specifically about the Shunite woman and what happened, and how she couldn't have a child, and then she did, and then the child died, and then he raised him from the dead. And, and, and as he's, and can you imagine, this is perfect. This is perfect. As he's getting to the closing line talking about the child, there she got. Can you imagine that he's like, he's like, whoa, baby, I couldn't have planned this better myself. Here she is. And the king's like, come on. For real? Is that real? And her and her son who was dead now is alive. Yes. What what can I do for you, ma'am? How many of things just got really good? I'd like my land back. Do you want your land back? No, I'm not going to give you your land back. I'm going to put somebody first in to make sure that you get every bit of what is yours back. And everything that was, anything that we prospered on at any time since you've been gone, we're going to give you all that. Come on. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. Wow. <laughs> you understand the King, King Jesus, mm -hmm. wants to bless you. And he wants to bring a miracle in your life. we got to make room for a miracle. The seed that we're sowing today will be what enables us to receive our miracle tomorrow, 10 years down the road, Amen. 20 years down the road. I can tell you story after story of sowing. Sometimes you feel like all you're doing is sowing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Man, I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I've been sowing. I'm sowing. Hey, where's the harvest? I'm sowing. Should, shouldn't, we have, shouldn't we have a planting and then a harvest? I mean, you know, sometimes in the kingdom, you're sowing and you're sowing, and you're like, where's the harvest? Well, I'm sowing. Well, keep sowing. And don't, don't become weary of well-doing. Why? Because you'll reap a harvest in due time if you do not get to give up. How many people have given up right before harvest came? Yeah. Because it didn't come when we thought it should come. See, one seed turned into a miracle of fruitfulness. If you had a child, it was impossible. Turned into a miracle of resurrection death to life, turned into a miracle of restoration. Everything that she had that was taken, that was lost, was restored, and turned into a miracle of prosperity. How does that happen? Well, it happens when we go from a passing by to an up close and personal relationship with God. Amen. It happens when we sow seed, which makes way for a miracle in the future. It happens when we take the promises of God to the place of God's presence. It happens when we 
take the promise of God and place it in God's presence, and then we speak faith and don't take no for an answer. Our reaction and our action, it is well. We don't let the facts take us out of faith. We don't let what we see make us forget what God said, because God never breaks a promise. It happens when we stand on the Word of God, even when it doesn't make sense. Amen. 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 I want to ask you to stand to your feet. Henry, what did you learn in Sunday school today? Nothing. Oh, you are the light of Jesus wherever you go. Yes. Yes? Is that what you learned today? Yes. That is awesome.